Hey guys, it's Mizuki Arts. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, I've seen this challenge be done a couple different times, but I decided I wanted to try the limited color challenge. I've seen multiple versions of it where people do only one color or they have three randomly selected colors. And overall, I just really wanted to give it my shot and see what I thought about it. For my first illustration, I wanted to really challenge myself by drawing it before I picked the colors. Uh, that way I would be kind of forced to pick different colors than I'd imagine things to be because typically when I'm planning out an illustration, the most fun part for me is choosing all the different colors and I tend to do that while I'm sketching things out. But I found while I was drawing this that not knowing what the colors were going to be uh, kind of stole all the personality from the drawing, so I sort of regret that and I wish I'd picked the color first, but it was an interesting, like, I guess idea regardless. <laughs> um, I had fun with it, but I kept imagining these clouds being like pastel rainbow and just really soft and fluffy looking, but when I put down the brown line art, um, and didn't really know how things were going to look, uh, I found that it just wasn't as full of personality. And especially since I made so many mistakes in the drawing, uh, one color kind of brought all those mistakes out and made the illustration not something I was happy with in the end. I guess that's just some food for thought uh, for my takeaway from this challenge, um, some things for me to think about in my future drawings, uh, especially since Apparently, not knowing which colors I was going to use demotivated me so much, and I guess this kind of seems like afterthoughts, you know, like things I should put at the end of the process, but it's what I wanted to talk about regardless. I guess especially since um, I was doing the line art at this point, I kind of knew that was the way things were going, and I kind of rushed it, so uh, I made even more mistakes. I think at this point in the challenge, I was a little focused too much on making things generic, so that's why her expression is just kind of there, you know? She's she's not emoting anything, and I think the moon is really the most reliant thing on this whole drawing, uh, because obviously a moon would look really weird if it wasn't some shade of like yellow or even a color that makes you think of night. But anyway, at this point I picked my color, I went to randomcolor.com and it gave me this cool purpley shade and I decided that since I was going to be using gouache paints, um, I would allow myself to go lighter than the original color that I had been assigned, but I would not be allowed to go darker than the original color. Since I work a lot with gouache and watercolors, this obviously made things a lot easier because it is harder to keep things a single tone, but um, I did try to get a lot of variation by layering the paints um, to at least achieve some form of a similar shade as the original color selection that the website had given me. I kind of felt bad at this point for almost planning for a purple, like I thought it was kind of uh, a neutral thing to <laughs> go in for because if I got a purple or a blue, obviously this would work out very nicely, this picture of clouds and like uh, the moon and stuff, um, but it also could have worked with yellows, so I kind of feel like I should have drawn something that was a little out of my comfort zone. Regardless, I did have a difficult time with getting a lot of like variation and contrast in the image itself because I wasn't sure how to convey her looking separate from the clouds while making the clouds still still look like they're a part of her. Uh, I felt that was really weird, especially with the line art, because you can see um, at her part in her hair, it looks like hair. And for the rest of the flowing bits of cloud, it looks like cloud instead of hair. I didn't actually do that intentionally. As you can see, there's not really much of a transition between cloud and hair. So um, I feel like that was probably me trying to cover up mistakes with my line art. In an attempt to make up for my um, failing use of color and quite frankly, boring composition with lots of anatomy mistakes, even in just like a headshot. Um, <laughs> I went back and forth with lots of different shades of purple to try and add some shading and depth to the illustration. 
um, and even as much contrast as I could manage with one color. I mean, really, since I had um, only one hue, I could have still messed with value a lot more, I feel, um, but apparently I wasn't doing that very well on that day, so it just wasn't going the way I wanted it to. Regardless, I persevered and went in for the skin tone to be a nice lavender color shaded by slightly darker hues. And I attempted to make all these sparkly effects around her face and in her hair uh, look at least a little brighter than their surrounding colors. And at this point, it was about time to start wrapping things up. So I went in with a last layer of slightly more opaque than usual uh kind of purpley tones and shaded things before heading in with my gel pen to try and salvage the whole thing uh at this point i was pretty much ready to call it a day and here's the final piece i don't know what was going on with this piece but it kind of resembles my art from like half a year ago so it didn't really come out at all how i wanted to sum it up um, but I do like all the more bluish tones that showed through, and I do have an appreciation for purple. So now it's time to get on to my second piece for this. I want to use three randomly generated colors, and I got two shades of purple for this one and red, so that was going to be interesting. Uh, this one was kind of weird, guys. <laughs> So, since I got three colors that basically didn't go to each other at all, like I got two shades of purple that I would probably never put together, uh, plus red, I decided to really push that and make a character that was basically two different characters fused together. Like, the idea of one person not belonging in two different places. So I decided to make this sort of like a Cinderella story, but instead of her becoming like a princess or something, she's also secretly a magical girl. So basically by day she's like mopping and doing laundry and things like that, but she also fights crime and stuff. That's the drawing idea. That's the whole thing right there. That sums it up. So in order to tell as much of her story as possible in this one drawing, I decided to draw lots of objects around her because obviously in order to tell a character's story, you need to see as much of their life as possible. Um, I suppose I could have just given her like a magical girl's wand or something that she was holding behind her back, but I really did want to give myself as many opportunities as possible to use different shades of the colors I was going to be forced to use for this challenge. I decided to kind of show this double lifestyle in the composition by drawing things that she would use regularly for her uh, kind of day job as uh, a worker or like a maid and on the other side to show her passion for fighting crime with <laughs> magical girl stuff. For some reason, I had uh, quite a lot of fun sketching this one out. I gave her kind of an aloof expression. Um, I don't think it's shown here. I think I changed her face a little bit later on. And apparently there's a little bit of a skip in the footage. So you'll just have to ignore that because um, I, think, I think my phone died or something while I was filming and I missed a whole bunch of stuff. So uh, forgive that. Just to highlight some of the accessories I actually did put in the illustration, I gave her uh, the magical girl brooch that is so iconic from shows like Sailor Moon. Like every magical girl show I've ever seen includes some kind of brooch or pen or something that uh, kind of holds their magic, uh, that sums it up. And uh, to our right, uh, she has a wand and, like, a scroll and a feather pen um, and lots of little, like, stars and sparkles. <laughs> and, um, to our left, there's a bucket of soapy water and, like, a duster, I think. Um, I just really wanted to highlight, like, this double lifestyle uh, for this character I had in mind. Something different about this drawing versus the other one is that I picked the colors before I went for the illustration. So the fact that I got kind of clashy shades of purple along with a shade of like red uh, was able to give me the inspiration to kind of work with that and use that for my advantage. 
I still enjoyed drawing the other illustration, of course. It was just less inspired looking, um, and it looked pretty just bland overall because I had to, or really I forced myself to make it like something that would work with any color. But uh, anyway, um, I worked with the reds into her skin. Um, I almost always work a lot of red into the skin tones, but uh, I really tried to push it this time. Um, and make her look extra pinky and extra soft and just really exaggerate it on this one. I knew since I still had the option to kind of uh, lighten my colors that opportunities for using that strong red would be more accenty. so I definitely tried to give her a lot of blush and like a lipstick look just again because I wanted to use as much of the red as I could without making the illustration look overpowered by it. I also was sure to put lots of different patterns on the patches on her dress because since I have different shades of purple I think it would look good to have um, like fabrics with a purpley color palette kind of mixed in with her overall look. I mean I guess I wouldn't have had to do that because um, in the end like, she's gonna have a lot of purple in her design regardless, since there were literally two out of three of the colors given to me uh, by the generator being a shade of purple. The weird thing about uh, the process of this illustration is that I actually really hate putting reds and purples together. It just, it really bothers me for some reason. Um, I just, I feel like it looks really bad and like clashy, especially if it's lavender and red so uh i definitely subconsciously lightened the colors to more of a pinky tone than i had planned to even as i had mentioned i had i had already planned to give myself this option but uh i definitely went further than perhaps i should have i'm not trying to like make excuses of course because uh it was kind of part of the challenge to use the red color so i did later darken it much more um but i still feel like maybe i had added more of a hint of a pink um to places like her hair um and of course the charm has more of a pinky hue to it so as much of a struggle as i had with with this drawing i think it came together nice enough that I still have a good time looking at it and hopefully you guys will like it too um, and hopefully you'll like seeing the pictures on Instagram and stuff because in the end I guess my goal really is to make something that's fun for me to look back on and fun for you guys to see. Um, now you might think the video would be like over at this point but I really wasn't happy with that first drawing and I wanted to try again so um, I went through the color generator and I got a green tone, so I'm drawing out something inspired by that particular hue of green. I'm going to try to keep the process for this drawing um, a little bit shorter than the others because the video is already quite long, uh, considering um, the average length of videos on my channel anyway. Um, and also this is just sort of a final thoughts piece. One thing I knew I wanted this piece to have was just lots of beautiful soft plants being all over the place and for it to just look like a very comfy scene too. So I drew a woman reading a book and there's just plants spilling out everywhere. Um, and I just, I thought it was a really cute idea, um, especially because when you're reading, you can really feel yourself getting immersed into the world. Um, so I felt like if the world was like spilling out of the book, that would be an interesting way to show that. And finally, it was time to add in some color. Um, I was really pleasantly surprised with how well this color like layered on top of itself. Um, I think it just looked really good and really cohesive. And this illustration turned out a lot more inspired looking than the first one uh, because I was obviously planning for the color and thinking about how I could use it to convey the mood in this particular drawing. Though I really don't think it was a smooth process for this one because um, as always, colors are a huge inspiration to me and they make up a lot of the fun part for uh, the art for me. So this was really interesting to kind of limit myself to a single color to pull inspiration from. And as a result, a lot of my anatomy mistakes uh, really weren't well hidden and the pieces weren't very polished.
For example, uh, there's something very off-putting about the hand, um, as well as the way I structured the face it looks quite off. Uh, I don't really know how to sum it up, but there's just something so strange about the way I drew it for this one. And I can say pretty much the same thing about the other illustrations I drew, uh, but they each had their own problems. There was a, a point I hit when I was drawing this um, in which I considered maybe I couldn't save this video, like I couldn't make a drawing I was happy with. And obviously I want to make art that I'm happy with and that you guys will like and that overall I won't regret uploading onto the internet. Um, but I think it's fair to show the mistakes too, which is why obviously I tried again uh, with this drawing. And I'm most definitely uh, more happy with this drawing than I am with the other two. Um, although I really did like the one, uh, the second one I did, like the magical girl one. I thought it was really cute. But um, anyway, I put lots of details into the plants. I wanted there to be uh, lots of shading and value. And that was kind of something I didn't really capture in the first illustration, especially like I just wasn't very good at balancing my colors and keeping contrast with a single hue. And finally, it's time to add in the sort of saving grace for this illustration. Um, I wanted to add a big window in the background. I figured if I could capture kind of a cool light, uh, just like a very pretty aesthetic atmospheric glow, um, it would make this color like really shine for this kind of illustration and especially for this kind of challenge. I really wanted to pull in like the very soft summery feelings that this color gave me when I first saw it. Um, so hopefully this window will help give it that kind of push in that direction. And after some final touches, uh, she was all done and I really like how she turned out. Um, I think I captured the feeling uh, that I originally had pretty well, um, which really only happens usually when I'm very inspired. Um, but it's good to see me using some of my concepting skills when maybe um, my inspiration is low. So uh, yeah, that's it for this video. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed watching me kind of stretch myself creatively um, and see what I could what I could do with limited colors, which as I've learned today isn't a lot, but <laughs> I had fun regardless and I hope you enjoyed watching it. Uh, like and subscribe if you did and I'll catch you guys next time. Bye!